<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Gamers Without Borders special report for the newly announced Nintendo NX, which is officially named the Nintendo Switch. And unlike our Xbox Nova video, this is not a joke. So we're just going to talk about this new information that's been revealed today. With me is Ozzy Arcane from Arcane Entertainment. Hello. And Oi from Oimon Gaming. Hello. How are we doing this morning? I remember that Nova video. <laughs> oh, wow. That's going back a long, long time. I like that's how a lot of our idea. predictions actually came to fruition, though. Like how the game was supposed came to, be... to the console. Well, yeah, Minecraft came to the console. But there was also the, the, the prediction that, like, games were going to be tied to a system rather than just free. And originally they were going to do that on the Xbox One, remember? And the shape of the Nova was actually very similar to the Ouya. Anyway, we're getting a little... Let's not look to the past. Let's look to Nintendo. Um, yeah, Nintendo. Well, speaking um, of Nintendo and Xbox, I was going to say, they did recently put up a Super Nintendo emulator on the Xbox One store, which is like, I don't Which didn't know, last long. Don't know about the legalities of that. All right. I'm well, let's start like off a... with what we like about this new announcement for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I mean, I, it kind of dropped out of nowhere. I literally woke up this morning, and it was just like, hey, the Nintendo are announcing their new console. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, let me get my breakfast first. They talked and... about it last night. They they sent out this tweet. It's like, we're announcing... We're doing the official announcement of the Nintendo the new Nintendo NX at uh, 7 o'clock Pacific time I'm like I'm okay, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll thing, yeah, my, I, my alarm yeah, okay. then I live in the UK by the time they sent that out I was probably already in bed well 7 o'clock here is midnight in Japan so. no I mean when they sent out the announcement Tweet yeah, you were, you were already in bed, otherwise I was going to tell you about it. Uh, yeah, so that sort of, I woke up this morning and the, my Twitter feed was nothing but election news and NX. That was it. Those were the two things going on today, and we're definitely not talking about the election. But let's talk <laughs> about the NX. Yeah, I mean, initial impressions are curious, frankly. It looks like an interesting idea, whether it'll actually, you know, hold up over long-term practice, I'm really not sure. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's always been good about coming up with interesting ideas, but it's really just a matter of what is the industry going to do with it. Mm. This seems to very much be sort of a push toward more social gaming, with the fact that um, you can take the take the things off and you can yeah. play the same games together using like miniature versions of the controllers, which is an interesting idea, but I can, I'm just thinking about how easily you could lose something like that. Oh, God, yeah. There's going to be a lot of thefts of this sort of stuff, I'm pretty sure. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. the, the, the the trailer showed, like, a guy on a park bench, and there was another guy in the airplane, and, you know, it, it, it was very interesting. Do you know what my first thought when I saw this was? This is like a tablet. Right. That, yeah, that was like my thought. This is very much like a tablet. It's a, a, just a giant screen. It's fully mobile. You just have a couple of controllers attached on the end. That's sort of my thought looking at it. I will say that... uh I'm glad that at least from the trailer, they didn't really seem to imply that they're pushing the whole touchscreen thing again. Which is weird, because does it, does it have a touchscreen is my question, because they didn't really show um, whether it did or not. I don't remember seeing any particular bits about having a touchscreen on it, so... Um, well, that maybe... seems like the kind of thing that they could handle with add-ons, because... This thing is very rife for having add-ons and peripherals where you just kind of snap the special controllers into the center bit, and there you go. You yeah. have your add-on. You have, like, a microphone or a touch screen or something else in there. Mm. But if you It look does at, seem if, very peripheral heavy. If you look at the Wii U, though, like, very, very few games, even ones that were Nintendo... Made by Nintendo, yeah. ...made any, any actual use of the touch screen. Most of the time, the controller was just used for, like, your inventory or a map yeah, it was or used something. for your inventory. Even that, I mean, even Smash Brothers, pretty much one of their biggest selling franchises and one of the most anticipated games for the system, you couldn't even use the touchscreen to just select your character. You had to use the controller. Yeah, and I mean... Occasionally, they do something interesting with it. I know Pokémon Tournament actually had a pretty clever way of doing multiplayer where one player would use the controller screen and the other one player would use the TV because you'd be fighting with uh, different angles of your characters. Because the thing is, touchscreens and motion controls both kind of have a problem where 
they don't actually improve the game. They give you more complicated ways of doing something that was just solved by pushing a button. Yeah, I mean, the touchscreen and all that stuff, it is a novelty, and I think it's getting to the point where the novelty is wearing off. It is very much a novelty, but it really matters what the developers do with it. Occasionally, mm. they do something interesting. You have something like uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, which is really just a, a remake of uh, Canvas Curse, but you do something interesting like that, where you have the touchscreen controls, you have something like that or when you have like a motion control is very much didn't work too well it's like we were trying to get closer to the virtual reality thing but and again talking virtual reality we have the the playstation vr which seems to kind of be going into that zone so i wouldn't doubt that the nintendo's next console after the switch is going to be some sort of vr unit i don't know i think vr may have died by the time they get to that <laughs> You because think you think they're gonna skip the VR altogether? Ha, like, have, ha, like, have, what's the next step after VR? Well, because the thing is, if any of you have Holodex. Ha, if any of you have watched like Jim Sterling's video about the VR headsets, it's just motion controls 2.0. Where once again, it's just a novelty. It's not actually making the games better. It's just. It's motion controls 2.0. It's just the whole thing is just like a tech demo again. In a way, a lot of people sort of predicted that the NX was going to be some sort of virtual reality thing, and it looks like those predictions were completely wrong. No, that but a lot of the predictions be... were were solid, were true, because I did see things about the screen with the detachable controllers and everything, and you could t turn the controllers on the sides to use them as separate controllers. I am sort of curious about how big the screen actually is. I mean, it looks sort it of... It looks about the size of the Wii U. Yeah, it looks about the size. Controller. I am wondering if maybe they're going to have a peripheral where, like, isn't there like a virtual reality thing where you can put a phone into some kind of goggles? Oh, and... yeah, the Google Cardboard. Yeah, whatever the <laughs> hell that is. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but it does make you wonder if that might be something they're planning for it. Uh, it maybe. That seems like it would be really heavy, though. I've, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems as though the entire console is in the screen. The screen is the console, as far as I can um, tell. I don't think it is, because it does have this massive dock, which doesn't necessarily need to be that big. Um, cause it could easily be just the size of the Wii U dock. But I think that dock is going to have the the hard drive in it. It's going to have like the possibly a disk drive. I don't know. But that well, it, and I'm pretty sure like when you put the thing in there, it's going to sync up your information and everything, so you can take your game on the road and then it'll back up the. I don't think so. Uh, data. Because you actually saw in the, the pictures that the games were basically like on those uh, little uh, cards that the DS games are on, and they actually did stick that in the, the detachable yeah, it, part. Yeah, it, it's because I mean, you got the guy playing it on an airplane. Playing it on the, on the train or whatever. Uh, on, on the, the train or on the airplane. So it seems to imply as though the system is within the screen, and why it has that huge dock, I don't know. Maybe there's I think it some... might be I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you why I think it has the huge dock. It's to protect the screen when you're not using it for one. Mm. Yeah. And it's, it, it's probably also the charging station, and obviously the stuff that connects it to the TV. It, it could entirely be that perhaps it has, like, a dual function in that it has two graphics levels. Like, maybe when you're just using the screen, it turns the graphic level down. Yeah, so, it we, runs like on the the, so, like, the dock would be sort of an external graphics card, which helps yeah. increase the graphics or processing. It seems an awful lot like the Nintendo 64's expansion pack, perhaps. Like, maybe, maybe. you know, when, when it's plugged in, you can do more graphically advanced stuff. Maybe. I mean, you know, let's be honest, we don't really know enough about it. A lot of what we're saying is... Yeah, a lot of this is speculation. speculation. We want to make that clear. I mean, we don't even know the price, which is... No, we don't, which is kind of weird. The f it's the fact that it is coming out in March, and they haven't even announced, like, all the specs or it, or the or the or even the price. Although it is possible, because, you know, TZ mentioned the possibility of the hard drive being in the, in the dock. It is possible that the dock itself may have more hard drive space than the detachable part. Mm, I mean, it's entirely possible that what you have to do is, like, you can make maybe a temporary save to the device itself, and when you dock it in, it saves it to the hard drive. Right. Or it could also be that maybe you can't use the internet connection when it's separate, which would be weird, because you'd think an internet connection would be sort of required. I mean, there's a lot of what's very much it's all up in the air at the moment, and we don't really know what the hardware or software capabilities are. Although well, it seems to be fairly powerful, though, I mean, because it's, because it's, in the video, it showed it running Skyrim, rem rem I would assume remastered. Well, I would I would imagine it would be remastered. It would be a bit weird if it's playing the old version Rich of Skyrim. Skyrim. What is that, six years old now? 
it seems to be as powerful as like the xbox one or the ps4 is now maybe more powerful we don't know really but then nintendo have never been a company that emphasizes power they've always no, been they've emph- emphasized, emphasized innovation which is yeah. I, this is certainly different <laughs> we'll give them that whether it works or not because i mean it seems quite small actually the 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 main controller seems like quite a tiny weeny little thing and the whole side thing so you know it does make me wonder about how how especially in terms of weight like you yeah. know the um the wii u remote controller isn't too heavy it's it's all right but one of the things i've noticed is it does get very hot especially if you're like charging it because the bat the batteries is actually the one thing that holds mobile technology back ironically enough. yes i will say that the, the charging is an annoyance not only that just the battery life in the wii u's main controller was yeah it lasts horrendous. like three hours it's ridiculous yeah i mean but battery life is always an issue in everything mobile it, one, you know, which, just... that, and so that one's really suck if the only way to charge the separate tablet was to put it in the dock so you can't couldn't really even take it on the plane like the guy does in the video there's one thing I gotta say about battery life when it comes to Nintendo products is Nintendo seems to have a really big issue where their devices put a heavy drain on the battery even when you're not using it. Because like if you have the, the Wii U tablet completely charged and you go a month without playing the Wii U, the next time you go to boot it up, that that the controller will be dead. There will be no mm. battery life left in it. They have poor retention. And it was the same thing with the Wii remotes. If you had like batteries in there and you weren't using it, it would drain them. Yeah. Because it doesn't actually have an off mode, because it's always ready for you to hit the button and cause everything to turn on. So, so it, well, on that topic, uh, we can go on to our concerns with the system. Well, My yeah, first one life. is how many freaking controllers there are in this thing. Yeah, because there's like the, the controller, which is the two slotted thing. There's like the separate controller, which looks like a tiny weeny little thing. There's a slightly bigger controller, which looks like the um, the the actual Wii peripheral controller. And Did then, of course, you? there's this big thing with the screen itself. So peripherals out the wazoo, apparently. And say, like, will these get lost? Will the I mean, the biggest thing I have is, will these be backward compatible with existing Wii controllers? Because there's really no reason for it not to be compatible with the Wii U Plus controller or the Wii U Pro controller mm-hmm. because it has the exact same button layout. Yes, it's Nintendo were actually pretty good when it comes to backwards compatibility. Um, it does make you wonder where they can. But they have some irregularities like with, with it as well. Like with the Wii U, like he was saying, you know, the new Pro Control looks pretty much exactly like the Pro Controller for the Wii U, and it's got the same buttons. The thing is, the Wii U's Pro Controller has the same buttons as the original Wii's Classic Controller, yet... If you're playing the Wii U in backwards compatible mode, you can't use the Wii U Pro Controller on things that You can't even use use the Wii U GamePad. Yeah, you can only use the screen. Mm. You can use the screen, and you have to use a Wii Remote to play with, which is retarded. That makes no sense. I mean, they were forward-thinking enough to put a sensor bar on the controller, which is okay. I I guess that was a smart idea, but geez. Nintendo has good ideas, but really, really dumb execution sometimes. And to me, the entire reason they did that is because they wanted you to upgrade to the Wii U versions of the Virtual Console games. Which I recently (laughs) did with Zelda 2. Even though not all the games are actually going to end up on the Wii U Virtual Console because, you know, third-party developers that said they were going to support the platform didn't support the platform. And and on the topic of uh, the eShop, the game's compatibility is... Again, such an arbitrary idea that only some games are available on the Wii U and some games are available on the 3DS when it really shouldn't be that way. If it's powerful enough to run the game, it should be available on the system. Yeah. It's the same thing with, like, everything that that was released on the Wii Virtual Console should have been available on the Wii U. Like, it shouldn't have been, oh, you have to go into Wii mode and use Wii controllers that you might not want to keep because you don't like wasting batteries. Yeah, absolutely. I I mean, I can understand if there were, like, legal things or copyright where the company didn't want their want their new games available but there it was like grandfathered in from the old one i know squaresoft might have been a bit like that but they, again there's really no reason for these things not to be compatible i mean they were nice enough i suppose to give you the ability to re-download it the upgraded version for a dollar if you already owned it which is 
I guess, a step in the right direction, but it really should have been just a simple cross-platform because compatibility. The only, the only things they really added were save states and forums that nobody needed. Yeah, save states and forums. Because, I mean, admittedly, I was such a douche. I, I upgraded my copy of Zelda 2 specifically so I could beat it again and share my three perfect files to the Miiverse. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Because I'm that kind of person. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, I mean, it, it does sort of make you question about backwards compatibility, seeing as a lot of the Wii U games are specifically designed for two screens, like the main screen and the Wii U control. So it does make you sort of question how backwards compatibility, if it even exists, it, is going to work. It better, because they showed Splatoon in the commercial. Yeah. It could be a new Splatoon game. I doubt that was new footage. Well, to be honest, a lot of the footage of the looked was... very edited. Because, I mean, when I saw Skyrim, I was like, wait, Skyrim? <laughs> wait, is that Nintendo Skyrim? Console? And then I was thinking, well, there is a new Skyrim game coming out, so... Yeah, I mean, the Skyrim game literally comes out in, like, well, it's not quite a week's time. It's a, it's a week. It's, it's a week tomorrow, isn't it? So, yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me if the new Skyrim game does hit the Wii U. But then again, if you look at the... If you look at the Wii U... When that was first announced, there were a lot of trailer games on there that didn't actually make it because they had the trailer for Batman Arkham City, sorry, Arkham and City, that did yeah. make it. But they also had a trailer for Metro Last Light, and that didn't make it onto the console. Well, I would imagine that that there was planned at one point, but it never it didn't come to fruition. Yeah, I think that's kind of what happened. But you know, so just because we see Skyrim doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But it's kind of curious to see that a big game like that but it does make me question because the new zelda game breath of the wild is taking a lot of cues taking from a lot of skyrim. cues from skyrim yeah and i'm kind of wondering if maybe it was a deliberate thing like nintendo saying hey look skyrim's out on this console but zelda is better <laughs> <laughs> which could completely blow up in their face if it turns out to not be i mean well, the, I the mean, new zelda it, trailer it, they are now. preparing a six-year-old game to a game that's not released yet but well, yeah. Breath of the Wild has a lot to live up to next to Skyrim. Oh, yeah. Breath of the Wild is... Hopefully it will live up to the hype, but we'll see. They, they also dropped some Breath of the Wild trailers yesterday. Um, yeah. Some new stuff. Again, looks pretty good. The one thing I am curious about, though, is... I mean, we mentioned this earlier, is the price. Because I need to know how much the console is going to be. So whether I'm going to get Breath of the Wild on the Wii U or whether I'm going to get it on the NX. Because obviously that's an important distinction. Yes, very much. I, from what I heard, I heard it was going to be two ninety nine, which I don't think is. I, I've heard anywhere from two ninety nine to four fifty. But it's all speculation, so yeah, it's very much speculation. But I mean, most consoles do launch around that price. It, it, it so sounds I would about say right. Save up four hundred just to be on the safe side. Because then, probably get, be then you can buy some extra games bundle. if it's less. Okay. I, I do want to point out because a second ago you were talking about you know games that may not actually show up on the system. It's like uh, I don't know if either of you saw the list of developers that have said they're going to support the system but it's like it's the exact same list that said they were going to support the wii u and then didn't <laughs> yeah uh, see, and I, I, I would say never believe speculation before launch only believe it when you see it you know yeah, 505 um, games activision atlas bethesda and bandai namco these are like these are just pretty much the big game companies yeah. ea when we saw how ea handled the wii u they gave them mass effect 3 and then said well never mind it didn't sell well enough goodbye yeah well that's just ea for you gung-ho cap Capcom, Konami. Wait, Konami is still making games? <laughs> I thought they switched to mobile only. And then mobile they, and then, and then they, machines. And then they started losing money and they said, oh shit, what did we do? Oh god. Quick, get another Metal Gear Solid game out. Well, yeah, oh you no, saw, wait, you... the creator left. Well, you, no, they actually are putting out a Metal Gear Solid game that's got zombies in it. Oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Don't forget about the unicorn zombies. That is like, that proves that they are completely out of ideas. Ko Kojima looked at it and was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck are you doing with my IP? Yeah, we're getting slightly off topic. I think the general consensus of the NX is, I guess, kind of curiosity. Like, yeah, mostly curiosity. I mean, it's because looks we don't know enough. You can't really tell too much until until we, we see specs on it or until we, we get more information. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it certainly looks 
interesting and you know it kind of like when the wii came out it was like they, they announced the, the the wii u sorry they announced it and i was like it's called the wii u but that's a stupid name and then they actually started showing it and i was like oh actually that that looks kind of interesting that could uh, be yeah cool. which i mean the big problem with the switch is that i don't really see the same kind of wow factor that i was seeing with the wii or the wii u even the 3ds or even the ds where you look at this thing and you think all the things that you could do with this kind of development or with this kind of hardware, what kind of games you could develop, what kind of gameplay you could manage. But in the trailer, it just kind of shows him just kind of going out and playing these things, which you could, I guess, theoretically do with just a tablet and some Bluetooth controllers. Yeah, which is exactly what I said at the beginning. You know, I said, I look at this and I see a tablet. It's it's pretty much an advanced tablet that's like geared towards gaming. Geared toward the console, yeah. The problem is... Um, a lot of tablet games don't actually have controller support. Well, no. They, they, no, they... but that's... So, like, that's, you, that's, you can't really make the comparison that, I mean. when, when it's not actually really that feasible to even use the peripheral on an actual tablet. Video game companies have tried to combine home consoles and mobile consoles together for a long time. This is not the first. No. It's certainly an interesting attempt. It's whether... probably the most clean combination that we've seen, because they've had, they've had like, the Super Game Boy had the Game Boy Player. It's always been Nintendo, it seems. But they're the innovators. They actually want to actually try to do something new, unlike Microsoft or, or like Sony. Sony, which has like the, I mean, Sony with the Vita did have like cross-platform play, but it really didn't uh, accomplish that much. I think the reason they're doing this is kind of obvious, though, because there's two very different markets that Nintendo has to worry about that don't agree on platforms to play their games on, because you have Japan, which... Yeah, Japan may, loves their handheld They consoles. love handhelds, they love mobile. They don't want consoles <laughs> anymore because a lot of them have small ass apartments where they don't got room yeah, for that Japan shit. Japan is a very small country, so and they always live. They have these very small things, which is also what drives them to stuff like JRPGs, which is also why so many JRPGs came out for the handheld instead of the console. And and they also are much more heavily reliant on public transportation than we are, so they're more likely to say be on a train or a bus and play the game while they're on their way to a destination than we are. While if you're driving, you're clearly not going to be playing a fucking video game yeah thank you hopefully. yeah but well, yeah in the west handhelds are not anywhere near as popular the ds has been doing good but they've basically made a system so where regardless of what your preference is you get the same games on it yeah yeah it's a I suppose that's kind of true. They're trying to find this sort of middle ground between consoles. Yeah, they're trying to find and, this middle ground, uh, but it's not sure whether it's going to end up pleasing everybody or falling in the cracks and pleasing nobody. Hmm. I mean, it's certainly, uh, again, I, I, the word I keep coming back to is curious. It's it's yeah. interesting. It's I want I do want to see more. I yeah, think we want to see engaged. more from this. We, it doesn't. We didn't automatically look at it and say that looks stupid. It's a we said that looks interesting. We're yeah. we're, we're interested in it. And, and I guess that's what it was intended to do from the start is drum up interest yes i i think that is fair so i think the trailer has in and of itself accomplished its goal yeah it's whether or not the console will live up to it that's the big unknown question that we're all gonna have to sit and wait around for maybe we'll do a part two when we actually get some yeah more maybe <laughs> once we have more information about this once they announce the price or what the uh... my, my uh my yeah. two biggest worries are both things that i had issues with the wii u with one is hard drive space because let's be honest the Wii U's hard drive space was a joke and most yeah. people most people do not want to have to buy a third party USB drive to expand their storage space especially when the Nintendo expects you to buy one that has its own power supply because they made the USB ports be low power USB ports Mm -hmm. The other thing is, well, how are they going to handle online for their games? Because with the whole showing everybody going out and playing thing, makes me have a feeling they're going to do what they did with the Wii U and just expect people to play with people in real life and not over the internet. And it's like, the reason that didn't work with the Wii U wasn't because you couldn't take the Wii U with you, it's because people don't have time for that shit. A lot of people that are, have grown up are not li don't live near their friends that they used to play games with. They need to be able to play online or they're not playing with people and exactly mm. i mean this thing is clearly marketed towards a more a mature audience you're not going to give this to like a five-year-old to play with these controllers are look way too expensive and way too fragile mm. I, the kid's just gonna like be like playing with it and rip the edge off and everything is good and i would not trust 
a kid that young to play with something like this. So this is clearly marketed toward a more adult audience who have lives, who have jobs, who can't go out and actually meet with people. And I feel like from the video, it looked almost like they were having sort of a land party, which I would be fun to go to, but it's it works. It seems to work the same way as th- as a DS or the 3DS, where it is over like a short range Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's going to be curious, is because I mean, if you can do local multiplayer and internet multiplayer, that would then be nice. that would be good. That would be good because a lot of people complain that a lot of the games that come out on say the 360 or the PS4 they don't do local multiplayer and that they only do online multiplayer and it's almost impossible to find your friends, which is. It, it, it's an understandable issue, but if this thing can pull off both, and again, it's pure speculation at this point, it would be good. But considering Nintendo's history with online gaming, they've never seemingly been a fan of it. No, they, it's they, weird. They they, it seems it. like the kind of thing that they need to figure out. Yeah, they, they've wanted to do it, but they've never gotten it right. It's like they've got ideas, but they don't really know how to implement them properly. Yeah. Because because their think... choices with multiplayer are the main reasons I never got into either of the Mario games that were released on the Wii U or really got into Smash Brothers because yeah you can play the versus modes of Smash Brothers but you can't play like the, the multiplayer story mode there is that one mode that was like a board game that doesn't have online functionality it's like those modes are useless to me if I can't play them online yeah mm. but I mean Nintendo have been getting better the online mode on the Wii U was sort of better than it was on the Wii I mean the Wii had like really bad online functionality oh, yeah, but, and the, because they used GameSpy the browser initially <laughs> it, it came with a browser that you had to purchase separately yeah and so i think they have been learning so maybe they'll have learned their lesson with the switch it just i guess again it's one of those things we'll have to it wait and see remains and... to be seen yeah I, I will say one thing about the commercial the overall tone of the commercial the music choice and everything that was going on in there felt much more western than their typical commercials for their products have been yeah the the other ones have always been kind of like goofy had like that weird like we music playing in the background it's like we would like to play and have the weird shit but this yeah it very much does seem more geared towards western audiences yeah especially when you see like at the beginning with the guy sat on the sofa playing the game and then the dog barks hey i want to go out that's <laughs> definitely western culture uh, I think. So I'm hoping that means they're listening to the people from the company that are actually in the U.S. now. Because that was uh, our friend Chris the Nerd when he was trying to get into like video game development and stuff. He talked to some people that had worked at Nintendo in America that basically said, yeah, Nintendo of Japan makes all the decisions and tell us to just fuck off. <laughs> wow. That wouldn't really surprise me. I mean, I've often suspected that Nintendo only really seems to care about their japanese user base but i could be wrong about that but it certainly always seemed like that like if they sell in america it's an afterthought or, i don't, you know, I don't think they don't care the about that like xenoblade almost never came out over here i, I don't think it's that they <laughs> only care about the japanese user base it's that the people that run the company in japan that are the main headquarters think they know best even when it's a market they're not part of yeah mm. exactly they have they have been in the industry longer than like, at least in the games industry, longer than any other uh, ones who are active today. So they think that the fact that they've been in the industry so long means that they know so much. But really, it means that they're stuck in their ways. Yes. They are still on very old world ideals. So, you know, hopefully, maybe this is a trend towards more modern thinking, perhaps. I mean, you did say that the advert is very westernized, and I'm, I'm watching it again in the background. And I think you're right. You know, it's it does seem very... Uh, westernized, I think. It's, it certainly feels very American. I wouldn't say it's very European, but um, it certainly feels very American. I think it's getting to the point where I think we've run out of things to say. We're, we're kind of... Yeah, we're, we're kind of tre- retreading old ground, so... Yeah, we, we speculated enough, I think, and we've been going for about half an hour, so... Yeah, just um, about. <laughs> so it's a good long episode, and maybe if we get the chance we'll do a follow-up when actually more information yeah, is... if we have more information about this we'll try to do, we'll see if we can do a follow-up we'll see which of us are available at the time yeah well hopefully if, uh, at least a couple of us will be but uh, we'll sort of see what happens so um uh, yeah well, i hope you all uh, enjoyed uh, our inane ramblings so oi where can everybody find you Yes, I am on uh, YouTube for the most part. Uh, I uh, it, with uh, my YouTube name is Oymon. That's O Y M O N. There'll be links in the description below, I'm sure. Uh, I'm also on Twitter um, at Oymon Gaming. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, so yeah, I do let's plays in my spare time. So uh, you can show up and enjoy those if you want. 
And Ozzy, where can they find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Ozzy Arcane. And uh, on YouTube, you just have to search for Arcane Entertainment. Not Ozzy Arcane. That's my old channel that full screen fucked me over on, so don't don't bother visiting that one. And I do want to say one final thing. Nintendo, you better add fucking achievements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. The weird thing about uh, achievements on the Nintendo console is it was left up to the developer whether they wanted to just include them in the game. Like Ubisoft yeah. had its Uplay points, which you could still get on on Wii U games. But it's interesting that achievements are so necessary these days. Even 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 I love getting achievements. You know, well, I, I can't I can't wait. I think even if even if you don't like getting them, most people can acknowledge that they're basically they're basically considered a standard feature at this point. Like mm. every every competing platform except Nintendo has them in some form or another. Yeah, it'll be interesting whether that'll happen. I don't hold your breath. I wouldn't either. I, I just I just felt like saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah we will see you folks next time take care yep bye